everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Caroline. Thank you so much for clicking on this video. And today we are doing whole entire Mediterranean meal prep. We are gonna crack open some vino and cook and drink some wine. Maybe you'd like a glass of wine too while you watch this fun cooking show. So Mediterranean diet includes a wholesome amount of vegetables and produce. It's also about whole grains, a lot of unprocessed foods, just real whole foods is the theme here. High quality foods, we're not gonna skimp on anything here. What we eat is how we feel and how we look and literally our medicine. That's what our body takes in. It's the very, very first form of medicine we consume. So we want it to be the best of the best. We are going to be making a handful of recipes that can intertwine with each other because I don't want you guys to just like have three recipes that you eat for five or six days. I want it to be very, very creative. On the menu today, we have a roasted butternut squash white bean soup. I'm going to make it super, super thick of a soup. That way you could use it as a sauce. They're a nourish bowl, as the Aussies call it, basically just an all-encompassing salad with grains, roasted vegetables, meat, all that stuff. Or you could throw it on some grains like just pasta. And then the second recipe is going to be za'atar chicken. With the za'atar chicken, we'll also be making tabbouleh with quinoa. And then we'll also be making the lemon tahini vinaigrette turkey meatballs, which you could also add into the pasta with the butternut squash sauce or you could have it with the tabbouleh and the lemon tahini dressing. So many variations. <laughs> Basically, it's five recipes total that we're making that can create like seven or eight dishes. Let us begin this cooking series with what takes the longest. Me finally taking my first sip of wine and everything that goes in the oven. So I'm gonna start off by preheating the oven at 425. And here I have some butternut squash that is from the freezer section to make my life easier. You can use any squash that you like, pumpkin, acorn, delicata. Sweet potatoes would also work really, really well. I'm going in with salt, pepper, and some avocado oil. So I'm just going to spray it really nice. Throw on some fresh cracked pepper and lots of salt. The main goal of roasting this butternut squash is to get it nice and soft and get that roasted golden brown color. So I'm just evenly coating to make sure we get all the oil, salt and pepper on everything. And I'm going to throw the butternut squash all evenly on the tray into the oven. Now that we have the butternut squash in there, I also want to do just a vegetable. So I always, always, always roast a basic vegetable or vegetables with my meal prep. The oven is already on. Vegetables, in my opinion, most of the time taste their absolute best when they're roasted. So I have some yellow squash here. Because we're having so many components full of so much flavor, I'm just gonna do the same thing of avocado oil, salt, and pepper. The reason why I am using this avocado oil I have the biggest issue with closing things. That really go good golden brown color and roasting olive oil at too high of heat, which is my golden fat of choice. <laughs> um, avocado oil is great for high heat. So anything above 425, it says even on this bottle, it has a smoke point of 500. So that is really good for when you're wanting to get, you know, really crispy like fries in the oven or just anything really crispy. You want to use avocado oil. I usually reserve olive oil for like medium cooking temperatures and then I have a super high quality olive oil for when you're eating it just like in salad dressings or when you're drizzling, on, drizzling it on top of things because it has such a fruity delicious flavor that you really don't want to burn that oil flavor off because also that's really bad for you. It's just so nice to have vegetables already roasted, already ready to go, because that way you'll eat them more. While the two vegetables are in the oven, I'm gonna go ahead and do the marinade for our za'atar chicken. I want to have a little bit left over because in the middle of the week, I'd like to switch it up and not just eat chicken and <laughs> turkey. I have some frozen salmon in the freezer, so I like to switch up my proteins and get the more variety we consume, the better it is for us. It's so important to get a vast variety of different foods. So salmon is an amazing fatty fish filled with omega-3s and just so amazing for hair and skin and all that stuff. So just to eat chicken every single day, it may be easy, it may be comfortable, it may be delicious, but to throw in a salmon here and there, or some any kind of fish, or you know, this would also be even really delicious on shrimp or something like that, or even tofu. You can marinate tofu and bake it off. Speaking of some liquid gold, I have some extra virgin olive oil from Italy. So I'm not gonna lie, I'm doing a Caroline thing right now. I am totally eyeballing my measurements, but I will have all the recipes linked down below, of course. After the olive oil, I'm gonna go in with the ingredient you'll see the most in all my cooking 
it never gets old, some good old lemon zest. And whenever I use citrus, I am a sucker for using both the lemon or the zest and the juice. I just think it's such a waste when you don't use both. I have the world's worst zester in the whole entire world. So we'll see how much I can actually get off of it. But I just think that it just adds so much flavor, so much brightness, and um, we're actually using zatar. So zatar has sumac in it, which is a very lemony spice and it's just lemon and zatar pair very very well together make sure when you zest you always check the back of that zester because a ton is left over shake it everywhere and make a massive mess good old caroline style so i'm only going to use about this is a big lemon so probably a third but half of a normal size lemon and juice that right into the marinade. Ooh, just found out I have some massive cuts on my hand. That is painful. <laughs> Next, I'm gonna go in with a scarlet clove. So I'm just going to take it and smash it. I use the back of the knife and just press down and then you can easily just peel off that skin and then just cut out any nasty parts. So like, for example, this scarlet clove has like this little Guy. I'm just going to press it into the marinade. You could also mince it by hand, but definitely don't need to do that with all the tools that we have these days. And scrape off all that good stuff straight into the marinade. Next, I'm gonna go in with a teaspoon of honey just to balance all the flavors going on in here. And then I'm gonna go in with a whole tablespoon of zatar. Oh, smells absolutely amazing. Might be a little bit bigger than a tablespoon, but who's judging? And then I have this really trashed pack of sumac that I definitely need to buy more of. Zatar already has sumac in it, but I love the extra berry lemony flavor that sumac gives. So a little bit of salt, a dash of cinnamon, and then we need a dash of allspice. If you don't have allspice, you could also use cloves here. The cinnamon and the allspice might sound strange, but when it's paired with the lemon and the honey and the olive oil, it is absolutely delicious. It all goes well together. You gotta trust me on this. You can barely taste it. It just adds an underlying like, oomph. like what, what is that underlying like little taste? Oh, it's cinnamon. And it just pairs so well. You just trust me on that. I have a bowl here of chicken breasts. You can use chicken thighs. You could use, like I said, salmon. You could use shrimp, tofu, tempeh I think I don't know I'm not super experienced with tempeh and I'm gonna use about 75 make sure it's really good and shaken up we don't want to have all that good stuff at the bottom um, Use 75 percent of it on this chicken and just let it sit for about 30 minutes and then when you're cooking chicken or almost any protein in general you want it to be at room temperature for about 30 minutes before you go ahead and cook it because that'll like that'll help make a super even cooking process because if the edges are room temperature but the interior is cold the edges will cook faster or the exterior of the protein will cook faster and so that way you don't get as evenly cooked and like the outside might be a little bit rubbery and the inside might be a little bit undercooked can you see you can't really see <laughs> i need like seven cameras at once right now filming all this i'm gonna leave the chicken to sit for 15 minutes leave it off to the side and just let it do its thing I'm gonna go ahead and throw this marinade into the fridge. Even honestly, use it as a salad dressing. So it is a two-in-one, you have a vinaigrette or marinade. So while we wait on the chicken to marinate and the vegetables to come out of the oven, I'm gonna start on a few of the stovetop items to keep rocking and rolling and use all this time efficiently. So I have a big pot here and I'm going to start with the base of the soup. So I'm gonna go in with some olive oil. We're only gonna be cooking at medium heat, so olive oil is a perfect oil to use here. And then after that, I'm gonna go in my with my mirepoix, the super finely diced carrot and celery, and I'm gonna throw that in with the olive oil. And I'm gonna actually add in some salt and some pepper and just cook them over medium, medium low heat. Into that celery and carrots, you'd also wanna add onion, preferably white onion. I don't have a white onion. <laughs> I only have red onion and I already finely diced it for another recipe. So I just doubled the amount that I finely diced and it's because it's so fine, it will burn. So I'm going to add it in halfway through when the carrots and celery have softened. So that way the onions don't burn since they're quite smaller than the, a little bit softer already than the carrots and the celery. Let's start our seventh, seventh. <laughs> second stovetop item, which is our quinoa tabbouleh. The ratios for tabbouleh is very similar to rice. It's one to two. So for every 
half cup of tabbouleh. I'm going to add one cup of water. So I have the water and the tabbouleh combined. I'm going to put a lid on this, set it over medium heat and just let it steam and cook and you'll know it's done similar to rice where there's no water left and you can just fluff it with a fork. And now that I've put the quinoa onto the stovetop, it's time to add the onions into the celery and the carrots for the soup. Now we have both things cooking away on the stovetop. I'm going to lay out this super dirty towel, but that doesn't matter because I'm gonna grab the vegetables out of the oven and check on them and turn them so the other side can roast. So here is the butternut squash, just starting to soften, just starting to develop some flavor. Whew, I'm getting a little facial here. I'm just giving it a nice toss to make sure everything is evenly roasted because the edges always like to cook faster than the center. Okay, getting another facial here of vegetables. With vegetables, you know when they're ready by color and texture, just until they're golden brown, rough rule of thumb, 420, 425, usually does the trick. So now we're gonna go back into the soup. So I have some poultry blend here of herbs, AKA sage, thyme, and rosemary. All really, really delicious herbs for the winter squash theme. They all go so well with squash. So it is just an easy way to get a bunch of herbs in a package. I am just going to get the thyme off of the stem. The simplest way to do that is just take the leaves. Oh, it already smells so good. I don't know if you're gonna be able to see this. So you see those little tiny leaves, just pull them backwards off the stem, like pull them down and they should come for the most part right off. If you don't have fresh herbs, just use dried herbs. Just double the amount that I am using, or I'm sorry, scratch that. Have the amount of herbs that I am using because dried herbs have way more concentrated flavor than the fresh herbs. Either will work just fine. I just love anything fresh. Okay, the kitchen is smelling absolutely phenomenal, mostly because I'm just standing over these amazing herbs right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and add it into the pot with the carrots, onions, and celery. So now we're gonna check on the vegetables. I think it's time to pull them out. So next we are gonna work on the turkey meatballs. I have just a pound of ground turkey here. For these meatballs, you do need breadcrumbs. However, I didn't have any breadcrumbs, so what I did is I just took the two ends. Sorry, I'm drawing off my Vitamix because I used it earlier today. <laughs> All right, so anyways, I'm using the two ends of some toast bread that I had, or some toast bread, some bread that I had, and I'm literally just gonna, I left it in the oven at like 200 for like an hour, so it's super stale. <laughs> which is what you want. And just like that, I have some breadcrumbs ready to go. So this is about a half a cup of breadcrumbs straight into the turkey. I don't know why I just said turkey. Maybe because I've been watching Bridgerton and so I'm in an accent mood. <laughs> to the meatballs, I'm going to add about a fourth a teaspoon of garlic powder. You could go ahead and press your own garlic. I just thought it was easier. Do some garlic powder, a teaspoon of good old oregano. This is oregano from my Nona's garden. She makes it herself. This is like one of my favorite spices of all time, like favorite herbs for sure, dried herbs. I'm gonna go in with fourth cup of lemon juice just to brighten everything up and give some zesty flavor to it all. Salt and pepper, the essentials. One egg. Just one, I think this is a large egg. I'm gonna go ahead and mix this up first before I add the feta because I want good hunks of feta, like to bite into a good chunk of feta. Oh, <laughs> I forgot my liquid gold. We also need two tablespoons of olive oil. You could easily do these in the oven, but I'm gonna throw some extra work on my hands and do them stove top because I really like that golden brown caramelization. Have that all mixed up. I need to check on the quinoa. No water is visible, it's not bubbling anymore, so I just turn it off and let it sit for a few minutes before I fluff it. Now it's time for the feta. I'm probably gonna use about two ounces of feta and I have my big Costco guy here. So I'm gonna take a hunk of this feta. Hold on, can I steal a bite real quick? Mmm. Oh yeah, this is amazing feta. So I really recommend crumbling it yourself, never buying like pre-crumbled feta. It just doesn't taste good. Like you just gotta buy like the real stuff and do the extra three minutes, three minutes. How about 30 seconds of crumbling it yourself? So give this a nice little stir. Perfect, so I have the meatballs ready to go. 
it is tabbouleh time. I feel like I need a bigger bowl. Should I get a bigger bowl for this? We'll be fine. In the tabbouleh, we need the base ingredients. One cup of finely, finely, finely diced cucumbers here. I seeded the cucumbers as well, so when you cut the cucumbers in half, you just take a spoon and scoop out the seeds from the center. It's super easy. I have one cup of diced Campari tomatoes. Those are my favorite. Again, I also seeded these. So what I did is I just cut them in half and used my fingers to get all of the center out because you don't want really like soggy tabbouleh. Next, I'm going in with some really, really finely diced red onion. I have my two herbs here, which is mint and parsley. I have about a cup of parsley, about a half a cup of mint. So I'm gonna go ahead and give those a massive chop. I am a diehard nerd, <laughs> herb nerd. I love herbs so much. They elevate a dish to make it taste 10 times better. So I doubled the quinoa amount just because that was what I was feeling. I thought like if I'm making quinoa, I might as well double it. So this might be a little bit quinoa heavy for your typical tabbouleh. If you like a really, really, really herby tabbouleh, then I would cut this quinoa in half, the amount that I'm using. I'm gonna go in with another clove garlic, making sure to get all the good stuff off of there. Next, about a teaspoon of salt, about a third a cup of good old lovely extra virgin olive oil, only the best of the best. Going in with some lemon. As you can see, I'm literally using the same flavors in honestly, honestly almost about every recipe, but that's kind of the goal. I want to use what I got on hand and then just have it in so many different variations that you don't even notice that you're basically eating the same thing, but in different ways. That's like the best way to get the best bang for your buck. You don't have to buy a million things when you go grocery shopping. So I have the quinoa here all cooked up, steaming away. So I really, really recommend adding the quinoa freshly made into this mixture because the hot quinoa is going to ex absorb, <laughs> absorb, I don't know why I'm holding it this way. Very tragic, let me tell you absorb all of those amazing flavors. It's really gonna soak up that oil. So when it goes from hot to room temperature, and then of course it will develop even more flavor as it sits. So this is like one of the best meal prep um, dishes you could make because it develops so much flavor as it sits throughout the week. Oh, this smells so amazing. It's time to taste the first dish of the meal prep. I taste it if it needs more salt, and it does. <laughs> It is time to make the soup all in one. So I'm going in with bone broth here. I'm going to use a whole entire quart, about four cups. Super simple once you have the vegetables done. And then I'm gonna go in with some cannellini beans here. They offer amazing amount of protein and fiber. I'm gonna go ahead and add in all of that yummy. Oh, this smells so good. It literally smells like Thanksgiving. Celery and carrots and all that herby goodness. We dirtied up this pot for a reason because after we blend it up, I'm gonna put it back on the stove top for another like 20 minutes and simmer it just to get all the flavors married well together. So it is super, super flavorful. And then lastly, I'm gonna go in with this roasted, very mushy <laughs> butternut squash. So now that everything is in the blender, the beans, the squash, the carrots and all that good stuff, I'm gonna throw it onto the Vitamix. So I have put the soup back on the stove for about 10, 20 minutes. And then we're gonna get on to eating the chicken and the meatballs. I'm gonna start off with cooking off the chicken. It's been marinating, it has absorbed all of this delicious flavor. And I'm just gonna throw it in a pan on medium high heat, make sure to have the lid over it. You wanna make sure to heat the pan for at least like three or four minutes before adding in the chicken. I'm stirring up a massive jar of tahini. So while the chicken is cooking, let's go ahead and throw together this Dressing, super simple. We're gonna go in with a third a cup of olive oil, three tablespoons of tahini. One, two, three. And then I'm going to go in with the last of this quarter of a lemon. So about two tablespoons, just a teaspoon of some really good honey. I'm gonna do one teaspoon of red wine vinegar. You could also use apple cider. I just love red wine. Salt and pepper, of course. One little tiny dash of garlic, because 
I don't want all the vampires to be scared of me. <laughs> Just stir that up. And the most important thing when you make a dressing is to literally taste it. Grab like a piece of carrot or cucumber and just dip it into the dressing because this is all your preference. So if you want it a little bit sweeter, add some honey. If you want it a little bit tangier, add some more vinegar. Perfect. Put a lid on it. And now I have a perfect creamy dressing. I have two dressings now, the leftover marinade and this creamy thick tahini dressing. And now I'm going to pull out the meatballs from the fridge, throw them on the pan that I am currently preheating right now. And then once all the protein's done, I'll show you. And I think we're coming to the end of this very long video. I've been filming for over two hours, but you're only watching like 20 minutes of this. Ugh. Isn't YouTube great? Okay, so I picked up my lip, so it's bleeding. <laughs> So ignore my bleeding lip, I'm sorry. I just can't stand the dry skin. However, it is finally time to close out this video. Thank you so much for watching. I really, really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, please, please, please give this a thumbs up. It really helps me know that I am making some videos that you guys enjoy. Let me know if you try any of these, any of these recipes out. If any of this stuff sounds good to you, leave it down in the comments below and make sure to subscribe so you can stay up to date on all the other videos that I will be coming out with. I hope you have the most zestful day and I hope you have a very zestful time in the kitchen. Ciao.